a sample based producer. My name is Zil Genetic. Sacktone, Arizona is where I'm from. Born and raised, a little bit in Phoenix. Um, I also make my own homegrown stuff. I've been doing this roughly for about maybe almost 10 years now. Just about 10 years. And it's a passion. Something I like doing. Hobby, I guess you could say. Um, done a few works with some of the cats out here in uh, Kamaki and Cassagram. A few of them in Sac. started how old was I it was uh, 16 and uh, what made me get the urge to do it was um, I uh, I started uh, freestyling uh, I started when I lived in uh, Phoenix and everything and moved back down to the res and um, I just didn't like the way that people were trying to give me beats that I wasn't really comfortable with that um, to to freestyle open, or something that felt more like me you know I grew up on a lot of West Coast stuff, so that's what I really preferred. And then uh, I ran into this one cat, uh, Joseph Brown, known as G.I. Joe. Uh, he introduced me to a, it's actually a PlayStation 2 video game. Um, it's called uh, Magic's Music Maker. And uh, he he let me have that. I had my memory card. I had a PlayStation 2, you know. I was like, hey, well, let's check it out. And got on it, and it was actually pretty crazy, you know. And, one thing led to another, I started making this, you know, stuff that sounded pretty cool that I thought, you know, I first started out with like very dark beats, like very, you know, emotional style, and then I started thinking outside of the box, and you know, around that age is when I really started really listening to uh, East Coast, and underground hip hop and stuff like that when I was about 15, 16, something like that. So I started getting influ influence from that kind of genre. And, style of hip hop and uh, started making it and just consistently every day after school sometimes I wake up an hour before I'm supposed to get ready for school and just start working on it weekends just be in my room making the beats and have my headphones on and everything that's all I did and uh, Joseph would come around I show him what I like and he introduced me to this other cat uh, Travis Brown his cousin so, goes by losing a talent fuck and um he was doing the same thing but he had the computer program for it and i didn't even know they had a computer program and that's when he introduced me to that so i ended up getting a laptop way later and started getting into it on there so he selected stuff i could select from in there but the game was better because it had different types of things i can get from hip-hop to chill out techno to you know, all kinds of other different stuff like jazz, Latin, Latin and everything. And um, it was just something I, you know, kind of liked was all those different styles. I mash them all up and just put them into one thing and make it into a beat. And uh, just try to make do with what I got. You know, I needed something more. You know, I needed to get more creative make my own melodies and I didn't have the type of money or equipment to do stuff like that. I was about 16 going on 17 when I, I got that the, the music program for the PlayStation 2. Automatically I just started getting right into it and putting different stuff together and uh, there was this thing on there called Turkish. You know, I found this melody on there and I just went right away and just just put it together, drums, bass line, everything like that, and uh, everything was all looped, like sampled stuff, not really sampled songs, but like just already loops of uh, melodies called sound pools on there, so I made this one, just, you know, I was thinking outside of the box and everything, ah, I can make something different, so I just put it together, I didn't know anything about EQ, so a lot of my old beats, they really sound good, but the quality is like really crappy, so um, 
I really didn't get into that lately. A few years went by, I still didn't get into that. And uh, yeah, and after that, after many years, it progressed into getting into different subjects and different programs and whatever you, and all that. And what? I don't got a beer. What's that one? Actually, the first sample I mean, I ever made it. Then we'll play that one. Jesus. Um, after I upgraded to the computer program and uh, Travis went and introduced me to sampling, taking old songs or whatever, and I, I was always a big fan of Miles Davis, so I took a Miles Davis song and see what I could do with it and have my own little do and everything on there. So. This is like the first beat that I ever made sampling. And, you know, it took me like maybe four days to finally get the timing right, the drums and everything. And it, it was really hard work. So I was really proud when I made it. And it was, it was pretty nice. I didn't actually get into the sampling part until I was about maybe 18. Say about 18 years old, 19. Something like that, yeah. And uh, that's when I really started getting in, getting the format down. Yet still, I didn't know anything about EQing, you know, just blaring on my headphones, and, you know, I always wanted to just be that guy that, you know, make the sample beats and just chop it up and make it sound fucking crazy and make it sound good, you know, so, and uh, eventually that's where it grew for my love of sampling, you know, I was like, I can do a lot more with this, so, just, I didn't have no vinyl player, no, no record player, nothing. I couldn't dig crates like everybody else, which I really would love because it made me fun. I feel like I was really in that hip hop element. What beat did I hear that made me wish, you know, made me say, fuck, I wish I made that? Uh, I gotta say, I mean, he's not really a big fan. I'm not really a big fan of him now, but it was uh, it was that Kanye he did with most Def. It's called Two Words. Oh my god, when I heard that, I was like, Oh, just the way he put the samples in and the drums, the way it knocked, it just, it sounded so damn cool, man. It's just something like, man, I wish that was me. I wish I could make, like, I still sit here and wish, I wish I could make something like that. Something at least to match it, you know, anything possibly top it. You know, that's what I really started to fall in love with. Yeah, I had to have been in middle school when that CD came out that Kanye West. And, uh, it was really one of my favorite songs on that CD. You know, and that's what made me just want to, mm, wish I got it in there, you know what I mean? But, you know, any time will tell, you know. Um, you know, like I said, I do a lot of different type of styles, you know, on West Coast. I grew up a lot on some West Coast stuff, and uh, so, sometimes I make it with my own little, my own little uh, melodies and stuff. Sometimes I sample some old school funk, you know, just to make it match that real funky West Coast type, you know. And, just um, try to see what I can do with that. And I have some other ones, you know, I just threw together. And it sounds pretty cool. Sounds pretty cool. Pretty legit, you know. And just, I like, I'm a big fan of that old school. Just make you, mm, bob your head. Just make you want to feel it, you know. Feel all hood and everything with your peoples. And, you know, something like that, you know. A banger, you know, real banging shit, you know. I grew up on that, that gang that gang lifestyle, I grew up with a lot of people like that, so I grew up a lot on the music, you know, the Snoop, you know, the Mitchy Slick, you know, all different stuff like that, you know, and uh, that's what I like making, you know, trying to make stuff like that, because I came around from that era and that generation and everything. Yeah. My beats right now, well, I got like a few artists I could pinpoint stuff to, a lot of, a lot of Joey Badass, Action Bronson, you know. Stuff like that, you know, some tall live quality. Um, I have some West Coast stuff I can really hear uh, cocaine on, you know, seeing the hood, corrupt, you know, just stuff like that. And I made a like a hard hitting, um, it's just like a modern West Coast one that kind of sounds a little something like you hear some uh, YG or J Rock on, you know. I mean, shit, the, the styles vary. I can make different stuff to fit basically artists that I think I can, you know, I can match up with, you know, sometimes somebody can ask me to make a beat to their style, I most likely can't do it. Oh, yeah, that one. Oh, yeah, that one. I made that one, I was like, oh, that's fucking dope, man. I was like, yeah, yeah, it just came together. 
Um, what made me stop rapping? Um, just uh, nowadays, everybody's a rapper. Everybody's a rapper, and uh, I just wanted to be. Um, still want you know, they don't want to be one of the guys. You know, back in my day, you tell somebody, you know, oh yeah, you rap. Oh, you rap. You know, well, well let me hear it. Nowadays, you say that to somebody, like, oh, he's a rapper. You know, he's probably gonna give you one of his mixtapes or something like that. You know, it's just. It don't, it don't wow people no more, and that's what I like to do is wow people. So I made a CD, you know, the DMP studio, was a member of DMP. I still fuck with, you know, some of the members heavily, you know. Um, it, it, you know, kind of freestyling. And there's times I throw something on We're over here at the studio and out here at uh, Dubs' studio and just kick a little cypher going on, you know. And, you know, and my type of style is not really everybody's cup of tea, but... Like I said, you know, it's what I like doing. Uh, eventually, I might end up getting back into the rapping. I just really haven't been inspired. I'm gonna leave it in God's hands. Just give me your chance to understand. But it is what it is. Only God can forgive. I can't understand. But I know what's in your hands to help me be a better man with a better plan. We gotta keep our heads up to see the promise land. But it is what it is. Only God can forgive. I can't understand. But I know what's in your hands. up to see the promised land it's hard to walk a straight path when that shit is narrow should i end it all so i can fly with the sparrow i got love to these streets and all my folks but it seems like they ain't nothing for me because life is a joke every other day there's another homie dying people lying got them trying so why are you despising you give to the greedy but forget about the needy but well, maybe it's a way to show us that you really see we pushing the shove so we can live above the clouds feeling proud and say aloud that we made it